everybody inside a air conditioned sanctuary. <laughs> um, but pretty soon camp meetings coming up and we'll be out under the arbor worshiping. Um, so grab those old timey fans, we'll need them. <laughs> but it is great to see you today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Be sure that you have picked up a bulletin in the narthex with our prayer concerns, some information on upcoming events, and for our children and youth, there will be an event out at the campgrounds. Um, more details will come. So if you know some young people who would like to be involved with that and go out to the campgrounds, watch for more information. It's a fun time. We are glad that you are with us in worship today. We are so blessed to have people willing to pick up and move us forward with worship and being together. Tom Triplett and Tommy have been so gracious to fill the pulpit, and we're grateful for the ministry there. And uh, God gives us gifts, and we are to use those gifts to serve him. And so we're grateful for those folks and the people behind the scenes who film and sound and PowerPoint. Um, it just is part of the body of Christ. We are one. And being together is so, so precious to us. And it's so good to see everyone in here. Let's begin our worship by going to the one who we are here for, and that is our Father. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we are so thankful to be together in worship. And as we worship today, Father, help us to remember why we are here. We are here to worship you and nothing else. We are here to give you thanks for all that you've done for us. And as your word says in Philippians, Father, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So today as we come, Lord, there are many things on our hearts that we bring that concern us and may distract us at times. But, Father, we know that you are there with us, that you hear our petitions and our prayers, and that sometimes we don't know how you're going to answer, but you answer in your way. Give us the faith and the hope to hang on to that promise, because, Lord, you are in control. And for the times when we feel like you're not near us, we pray that we'll feel your peace. We pray that we'll feel We'll feel your presence with us because you love us and you care about us. So God, let us always remember that you are there all the time. And as we worship today, may Tammy's words be your words that touch our hearts and give us strength for the week that we can go be your disciples and share the good news with others, that we can live a life that others will look at and say, hey, I want what you have. Because right now in this world, things can still seem so unsure. Lord, for those who are on the list of prayer concerns, we pray for your touch, for your healing, that they may feel your presence through their health journeys or whatever they face. Lord, we just give this all to you. And as we worship, may your spirit be among us. Empower us to feel you as we go and take your spirit with us. And we ask all these things in the most precious name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming today. Woo I love when Deb opens, you know, and her prayers, they're just right on point and just absolutely perfect. Thank you, Debbie. If we could all, uh, if you could um, go ahead and stand up with us today. We are actually going to um, say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy 
Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Thank you very much. Are there any children? Yeah, go ahead. Have a seat. Are there any children in here today? Thank you, madam. You're awesome, Bella. <coughs> I may have to ask someone else to come on up. We're, we're going to do Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, but I just thought we'd come down. Yeah, I wanted the children up front for the song. I'm getting everybody out of their comfort zone. Here we go. Woohoo! Right from the beginning. Okay. Can you see the screen in the back? Okay. So we're going to sing the song. Miss Judy's going to lead us in the song of Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Okay. Can you all help? Will you all help us sing that song? Thank you, Judy. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. here, so we're going to do a part of it. I'll read it. Don't worry. You're looking at me like she's going to make me say it out loud. I'm going to. Okay. Ephesians 2, 13 to 14. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility. Thank you. Okay. I have papers today. Are you ready? And tape. So, thank you for coming up. Thank you. Okay. So, I need to know if you would like to eat, you have two choices, a peanut butter and mayonnaise sandwich or a bowl of liver soup. Peanut butter. Peanut butter? Yeah. Okay. Do you all say that too? Okay, so you all can go over by Miss Amanda. Go by Miss Amanda. Peanut butter or, or liver soup? Soup? All right, here we go. Yes, this is what we're hoping for. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Okay, well, I'm just going to go on this side, okay? 
because this is the cool side, right? The liver soup side. Okay. Next thing, ready? Do you want to eat a cup of ketchup or a cup of maple syrup? Ketchup. Maple syrup. Ketchup. Syrup. Oh, yes, syrup. So here, syrup, we're here, we're here, syrup, right here. You stay with me. So my dad in northern New Hampshire, we have trees. And in the, in the old days, like when I was little, we used to have to actually go tap each tree and put the little thing in there and get the, hang the buckets. You'll see those in old pictures. But I'm really not that old of the pictures, but we did do that. <laughs> So maple syrup. Okay, maple syrup. Hang on to that. Do you mind hanging on to that? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. I think I'm just going to come over here because the cool kids are on the ketchup side. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay. So I actually have a child, uh, two, sep two separate children that would do either one of these. Okay. Are you ready? Would you eat a lemon? Or would you eat a raw onion like an apple? Lemon. Lemon. Okay, lemon. All everybody over here. Okay, everybody over here. Yeah, I have a child that really would take the onion and eat it like, like an apple. Yeah. Mm. I have weird children. Don't mind me. I don't know where they got it from, though, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so, oh, we're all over here. So this side of the congregation, this side of the congregation, we are the cool people. We are the in crowd over here, okay? Next one, a table, or two tablespoons of hot sauce or two tablespoons of mayonnaise, and not Duke mayonnaise, okay? So, I mean, hot, hot sauce. sauce. <laughs> hot sauce, right? <laughs> And I may be a northern girl, but let me tell you, y'all converted me on the dupes. There is no mayonnaise like dupes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, let's see. Okay, this one's this one's pretty good. Thank you. Butter or buttermilk? Butter. 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 I do buttermilk. Yeah. Oh, okay, here. Here's the butter, folks. Here's the butter, folks. Thank you so much for helping. Thank you. Gotta keep the cornbread for that. Buttermilk. Um, what, what are the cool ones, Sherry? <laughs> okay. We're going to lay these out on right down here. And if y'all could help Amanda, if you don't mind helping too. So we're going to take them together real quick. Yes. Thank you. So we want to do like at least two rows if we can. Good job, Bella. Good job. Yes. Yeah. You, you got it. Bella, you ready to take? Perfect. Okay. Ready? Two rows. Yeah, it's okay. I love help. That's perfect, just like that, Bella. That's perfect. Perfect. Mm. Right there, Bella. Thank you. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, we need to pick it up one end to the other. Could you do that? Is that Sherry? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of like. Okay, do you mind putting up um, the scripture that's before? <laughs> Backwards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay, so in this scripture in the beginning, what it was talking about was the different people. So the Jewish people and the Gentiles. Okay, so sometimes, well, the Jewish people thought they were better because they were actually children of God, right? And then the Gentiles were like, yeah, but we accepted Christ. So what they did was they had a division. 
right? And then so Jesus came, and he had to die on the cross, didn't he? So when he died on the cross, so verse 14 says, For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one, and he's broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. So there's no more anger between us, right? So if you can take your thing, your wall, but we're going to pull it tight, pull it tight, and then we're going to break down these walls because that's what Jesus did when he died on the cross for us. Are you ready? So just hit That's it. So now we have no more division, right? We're all one because that's why Jesus came, to make us all one. Rip it. We're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to sit here in church today or tomorrow or next year when we're adults. And we're not going to say you can't come through our doors, right? Because we're all one. We're one in Jesus. Okay? Okay, thank you. That was cool. You can keep the paper and we'll take care of it. Just don't throw it at anybody. Okay. I feel like I have to say that. Okay, we're going to go to our next scripture, and we're just going to finish up Ephesians, and we're going to go from uh, 15 to 22. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body, through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, which Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. And we're also going to read a second scripture today, and this will be Mark 6, verses 30 to 34. The apostles (laughs) gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them, I'm sorry, and now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. For our prayer this morning before the four, <clears throat> does anybody know the song Sanctuary? The words up here? Oh yeah, we're singing this a cappella, and this is going to be our prayer today. So, if you're ready, and we're going to sing it through twice, and then we'll end in the prayer. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.
holy and acceptable, acceptable to you, O God. Amen. Amen. Sheep without a shepherd. What comes to your mind when you hear this? Lost. Lost. Very good. Like, they were running. You know, they were running to each place. So it's like chaotic, maybe, there. And Jesus stopped and taught them many things. My dad, y'all are going to get to know my dad very well. He's one of those great men in my life. Taught not, taught not only my sister and I many things, but he also taught so many other people. He would meet... My dad never met a stranger. And at his service, which would be coming up um, in a couple weeks, um, I had a gentleman that came in from ROTC. And he had just met my father a, a few weeks prior, when my father could still ride in a car. And they went down to White Mountain Regional High School, and they were giving the awards for the ROTC. And dad had to go out and sit in the sit in the car, my Uncle Ed's car, and the commander came out and started talking to my dad. And they had a gorgeous conversation about the military and about God and about life itself. If we could only teach people every step and wherever we sat and wherever we stood everywhere we went. My dad was also um, an engineer of sorts. Um, he would figure things out. And he would figure out how to do it, like make a pound cake on a campfire. My dad was a diehard Boy Scout. Um, or make a contraption to make toast while camping. Remember, he was born in 1923, so they didn't have all these neat little camping things that we have now. So he would learn how to make it by himself so he could have toast. And then he would share it. He would show other people how to make it. And I have gentlemen that went to... Um, scouts while I was growing up and they would come to the house always and say your dad taught me this or we'd be in school you know what Jarvis taught me this weekend and it was really cool to be able to hear great stories of my dad my dad uh, learned his storytelling from my grandfather who my grandfather when he would get into trouble or he would tell us a story he had a little round end on his nose and a sparkle in his blue eyes. And you know you were in trouble because he, he, had a, he could talk you into anything. My grandpa, yeah, my dad too. He had the same blue eyes. And actually I have two boys who had those, so I'm in trouble too still. But they had, you know, when they told their story, they always had a life lesson attached to it. And I could just actually just sit and listen to them for hours. And now that they're both gone, there are times that I can sit in the peace and the quiet and still hear their story. <clears throat> One of my dad's stories is when he was in the Army Reserve and came home to Cobra. My grandpa sent him to Pittsburgh, which is just a little town just north of us. My grandfather moved to northern New Hampshire from Willimantic, Connecticut. He was a golf dealer. So they had the golf service station in Colbrook, and then they had one in Pittsburgh. And uh, it was cold. I'm from eight miles south of the Canadian border. Pittsburgh, if you've seen New Hampshire, it pops up over there. And like, so it's even north of where I came from. We used to have 20 below weather, you know, at least, oh my gosh, like the whole month of January with the winds that blew at the same time. It, we call it the tundra. <laughs> and I did. For all you young folks, I did walk uphill every day to school three miles. My dad did seven. I only did three. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it was a really cold winter. My dad was making gravy. Well, he said when he cooked it, the gravy just wouldn't get thick. So he kept adding flour <laughs> until it thickened to the point where he liked it. And then he ate some. Well, he put it into like a loaf pan and put it into the refrigerator. He got into it the next day, and anyone who knows, knows what happens to that flour-enriched gravy. Um, it was a, just a block of gravy, jellified gravy. 
And he would tell us he would slice off some of it, warm it up, eat it with some bread, and he felt like he was a king. To be able to have gravy at each and every meal. What I learned from this story, and my dad tells us, was to be grateful for everything. My dad didn't complain of too much gravy, but instead he was grateful. And therefore God blessed him with many meals. Dad was so grateful. In Mark 6, verses 30 and 31, tells us that the apostles came back to tell Jesus everything they had done. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going. <coughs> Talking about the, the chaos and the loss. Dad lived alone. And in that golf garage, there was just a little like apartment, but it wasn't really an apartment. It was, you know, like the attic. Um, so he lived there above the garage in Pittsburgh. And it certainly was a desolate place in the middle of winter. I wonder if after World War II, my dad needed to go to a deserted place. Not one of comfort, but a place to be alone reflect, and eat awesome gravy. <laughs> when the disciples and Jesus went on a boat to go to the deserted place, verse 32, in verse 33 tells us that they were recognized and the people were running to the place where they would go ashore, running hurriedly on foot. Jesus was tired. His disciples were tired. He didn't turn from them, though nor did he turn them away. He instead looked upon them and had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Catawba is currently in the same boat. We are waiting patiently. And to be a peacemaker, are we to just sit and not cause waves? Nope. We we are to keep moving forward. You continue to have worship service and Sunday school. You changed so all folks could attend the service and Sunday school. We're no longer divided. We're all together. Your men and women's groups are meeting monthly and doing amazing mission work. You also had VBS, right? delivering meals for the shut-ins with everybody that helped with plates of love, the persistence and continually moving and showing love is exactly what you should be doing. So keep it up. We have the shepherd of peace guiding us. But always remember to take your rest, take your Sabbath, so that you can regenerate. The scripture from Ephesians, Christ brought us near to him by his blood. Hmm. We were far away, divided from God by our sin and away from our neighbors and friends. But God, the eraser of all bad things, sent his son Jesus as our peace, as our shepherd, and through his blood, we have been set free. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. The veil was torn when Christ died. The veil represented the separation between God and man. Mankind could now have direct access to God, Jew and Gentile alike. Look at verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God. We are citizens with the saints already as you sit right here, as we stand right here on this earth. We are already there, knit together, Already, already we are citizens. Already members 
of God's house. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows in the holy temple of the Lord. The last verse, in whom you also are built together spiritually in a dwelling place for God. Dwelling place for God. God takes up residence among us. So what does that mean for us? It is the idea of peace. Think about when God dwells within us. We have peace. If you go out and you have irritation resides in us, or we want to go after money, or we want to go after fame, we don't have peace. Where do we find our peace? In God alone. We must tear down those walls that divide us. Just like love is a verb, so is the same with peace. We can sit around the campfire and sing Kumbaya all night long, but that won't help break down the walls that divide us. The plates of love. Folks didn't have to be a member of our church. We're still going to feed you. VBS. We actually had children from another state, which was really cool, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else can we do as a congregation to show our willingness to include, to invite, and to say, you are welcome in God's house? Honestly, in the six months I've been here, you're doing this well. So where do you go from here? To be a dwelling place for God means that we also take up God's causes. Call upon the power of God dwelling in you to strengthen you for this task as peacemakers. Not just by sitting back and feeling good about what we've done but getting out of our comfort zones continually. We know there is more, right? We know there is eternity. And when hard times come, there is always God. It is always God's time, God's reign. We can hold on to hope knowing we are already members of God's household. The great news is Jesus is all about knocking down walls in extreme love. It took his blood. It took his death. It took everything he had. But the walls came down. The veil was torn in two because of his love for all of us. Keep tearing down the walls. Don't build the walls around you to surround yourself. Because what happens when we build a wall around us? We think that we're going to be safe, right? We're protecting ourselves. We build fences. But you know what happens when you do that and you start getting comfortable sitting in there? You actually become a prisoner within your own walls. So you've got to get out of those walls. You've got to keep tearing them down, tearing them down. If we keep the walls up, we will never know peace. We're God's dwelling place. God hurts when he sees people hurting. He hurts when he sees we've turned someone away. Even Jesus, when he was tired, the disciples said the hour is late. Let's move on, you know, send the people home. Jesus did not. He had compassion upon them, saw that they didn't have a shepherd, that they were like lost sheep. So he stopped, cared for them, taught them, and then they fed him. So if you go on into the scripture, you'll see it's where they feed the 5,000. And then he walks on water. Mm, mm. We must share the stories of Jesus. Just like when the children were up here singing, tell me the stories of Jesus. Make sure you're telling each generation the stories of Jesus. Because we do not want 
our future generations forgetting about him. We must always talk to them, sing these songs to them, because where will they have hope if we don't share the stories of Jesus? They have to have something to hold on to. We don't want our future generations being lost and being sheep without shepherds. They will always be sheep with a shepherd because they run to Jesus to follow him. Our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, etc., etc., depend on us. They depend on us with God dwelling in us so that they will never be alone and have the strength of the armor of God. Are you ready? All right. I got lost once in Japan. My dad, um, we moved there after dad's first uh, Vietnam, and then we lived in New Hampshire, and um, I remember saying goodbye to the house. I was only four years old, four years old, saying goodbye to the house, and we were moving to Japan. Have beautiful memories of Japan. Uh, one thing, my mother's Japanese, in case, in case you didn't know, my mother is Japanese. So it was great for mom to go back. One of the memories that I have is I got lost in the PX. And my dad, who was always the teacher, always the teacher, told us to always go, if we get separated, to go to the service desk. And he was frantically looking for me, knowing me, I was looking at something and just kind of kept looking and walking away, because that would be me. <laughs> so I went there. I found it. It was on the second floor. And my dad heard his name called. And he ran to come and get me. And he was not mad at me because I was separated from him. He was so happy that I listened to his instructions to go to a safe place and wait for him to come. Let us all teach the children that Jesus is our safe place and they will always, always have somewhere to go. Let us pray. God of love, God of peace, thank you for reminding us through Paul's letter that there are many ways to feel peace no fighting, no war, no noisiness. When we are uncertain, help us to lean into your strong arms of grace. Thank you for the calm presence of your son Jesus, who is our peace that is always with us. Give us peace, O oh God. Amen. We are... I'm inviting all of you to come to the altar again to keep finding our peace and to not be distracted because we need to always focus up and know that we are no longer separated from God nor are any of his children separated from God. Judy is going to be playing Peace in the Valley. And so it's a time of meditation for all of us. You may come to the altar, you may sit in your seat, whatever feels comfortable for you. But let us meditate and pray to God that we are always bold enough to share the good news and that we're always strong enough because we depend on God.
I would like to take a moment to list all those that are on our prayer list in our bulletin today. Prayers for health and for peace and for guidance. Let us stand and we'll sing the last song, which we always got to go out on a happy note because God is good all the time. All the time God is good. Yes! I knew you would know that. That's awesome. <laughs> woo Yes!